Apple appears to be falling behind when it comes to AI. How do you respond? I don't, I don't believe we are. Not to worry. Not to worry. <laughs> this are two of Apple's executives in 2023 confidently dismissing clues that Apple's falling behind in AI. But things look very different today. Inside the company, Siri is considered so broken that a senior director reportedly called their AI launch ugly and embarrassing. And now, I never thought I'd say this, but Apple just made a quiet admission of defeat. And the proof is in the deal they are making to let Google's Gemini run inside Siri. Something Apple would never consider unless things were really bad. So what went wrong? Apple tried to fix it in 2024 with Apple Intelligence. But when it arrived, most of it either handed off to third-party models or didn't ship at all. Siri stayed broken and kept sending you to web links instead of actually doing the work. Meanwhile, other Simpsons handled multi-step requests that actually caught things down. The inside Apple, the pressure cooked, and in the rush to cover their backs, they promoted features that weren't actually ready and got into trouble. Apple had a serious problem. You probably saw the side-by-sides -side people did, ask for a spec comparison, Siri puts you into search. You don't need an assistant for that. You have just done it yourself. Ask to play a specific, specific track. Gemini lands on the right service, the right song. Siri misfires on a keyword and plays something else. One feels like an assistant, the other feels like a rapper for search. Why did this happen? Apple builds around console, deterministic systems, tight predictable behavior. Generative AI is probabilistic. It hallucinates, it degrades at the ages. At Apple's scale, 1% of error becomes catastrophic because it shows up everywhere. So Apple's, Apple's way of making products clashes with how this tech works. There were issues internally too. Important AI leaders left friction between teams. And when the company known for polished experiences starts missing, internal morale drops. And you can't grind your way out if the architecture itself can't hit your quality bar. It is the pressure no one wants to admit. If Siri can't visibly improve, Apple risks cruising the story that their devices just work. That story sells phones, it anchors price in power, and it locks in the ecosystem. So they needed a near-term path that won't blow up the brand. If the tech can't meet the battery, you either stay silent or you borrow capability. Apple chose the latter. Well, at least they tried to land it, but fuck it. So Apple bars, but how they bar tells you everything about their priorities. Bloomberg reports that Apple will pay roughly a billion dollars a year for a custom-tuned Gemini, not the public version, a dedicated slice, running on Apple's private cloud, on Apple's silicon inside Apple-controlled data centers. As always, they overthink the privacy even at the cost of speed. So the stakes are clear. Apple's identity is built on privacy and reliability. Absourcing Siri's brain to Google risks that identity. If customers start thinking Google powers the iPhone binking, wait, do, does that right? And the brand gets, the brand promise gets blurry, especially when Google is known for tracking elf repeat of users' behavior. It's just so an Apple. So Apple's built a technical and narrative war. Google supplies the model, Apple controls everything else. To the user, it's still Siri. So why lose at all? Capability gap. Gemini at its largest scale. Massive training runs, trillions of parameters. It can plan, summarize, and handle steps with few mistakes. Apple's internal models, small and efficient for on-device use, don't yet match that. Planning and summarizing are where mistakes explode. If you want Siri to fix a calendar conflict, write an email, check a document, or plan a travel, the bigger models win right now. And here's what Gemini covers. Summarization and multi-step planning. Siri remains at the front end. You speak normally, it decides what to do. And Gemini steps in when more intelligence is needed. So Apple Intelligence still handles local tasks, rewriting a sentence, identifying images, accessing private data, heavy planning runs in the private cloud. That keeps sensitive info inside Apple's walls and let them claim that they're still true to their promise. You've probably had it or read it or however you consume information. Sign up for my newsletter down below. Oh, sorry, I couldn't just not. But Google already pays Apple 20 billion a year to be the default search engine on iPhones. A billion pack for AI is a tiny in comparison. Both companies can frame the deal as win for users. Google gets the distribution and request to elementary, safely mediated, and Apple gets, well, for once we can say, zero words. The economics are simple. Building frontier models means burning tens of billions on training chips, energy, talent, and then watching the model depreciate in months. So leasing is cheap and more flexible. If Anthropic, OpenAI, or an Apple-tuned model beats Gemini, Apple can swap. 
because they're building against performance standard, not a brand. Tamsa already shaped Gemini under the hood. Potimas didn't rebel, they judged the experience. If the assistant walks on that Saturday morning when you need directions, nobody cares about who made the model. Privacy, privacy messaging is key. Apple can honestly say your data stays in Apple run servers and Apple chips. That's consistent with the history. And here's the hidden advantage. By controlling the orchestration layer, Apple sets the rules. Models become suppliers competing to serve Apple, not the other way around. This signals something big. Apple would treat more AI models like modems, storage, displays, essential but replaceable. But really quick, before we continue, I wanna ask a favor from you. You watching this. It's always been a dream for me since I was tiny to make videos I believe to be interesting and have a community of like-minded people like you around it. So this is essentially what I'm trying to do. I don't want to waste your time, so I'll just ask for this. Just subscribe and be part of us. The 66 have already done, so I thank you for doing that. But to say, I mean, Gemini, whatever we were talking about. Now the bigger play, Apple is communitizing models and weaponizing integrations. Apple didn't tie the iPhone brand to a singular party supplier forever. They instead created a system where suppliers could be replaced, negotiated deals and eventually invested in their own. Boy, it made sense. So same pattern here. Models are important but they are not the product. The product is the system that makes your device feel like it knows you, respects your boundaries and gets things done. So step one is use the hardware upgrade cycle. Expect the best sale to arrive first on the newest chips and tie private cloud features to the device security credentials. New chips means faster on-device information packaging, stronger security protected keys and lower overall delay. But yes, it encourages upgrades. If the assistant is meaningfully better on the latest iPhone and Mac, the ecosystem sees a lift without Apple moving a finger. The step two is glue. Shortcuts, Siri, and cross device memory becomes the connective tissue. You mark drafts the brief using on device summarization. Your iPhone scales meetings with private cloud planning. Your iPad presents the tech. It feels seamless because the identity, context, and permissions live in Apple's lair. The more devices you own, the more the system feels alive. Lock in without calling it lock in. And step three is the services age. If models commoditize, only moves to the orchestration layer. Context windows that includes your photos, mails, files, permission systems that controls action, long-term memory that's actually useful and safe. So Apple can create connection points for developers to request actions, draw Siri with clear user approvals. The assistant becomes a basic part of the operating system. That's where profit lives and just builds up. Profit discipline is the quiet constant here. Apple avoids burning tens of billions, chasing the most advanced trading, while the science is still changing. So they spend on usage while investing in their own efficient on-device models for tasks where privacy and battery are non-negotiable. That mix lets them market reliability, not novelty. So this say AI isn't a top reason for upgrades. Reliability, battery, and camera are. So Apple frames AI as quality. It's the reason the camera gets the perfect shot, the battery lasts longer, and serious stocks apologizing. Competitively, both sides get something. Google gets distribution and refined request taxonomies. What people actually ask, mapped against the device context, and Apple keeps the trust wrapper. But actually, surprisingly, Apple chose Gemini and not Cloud or the other models out there because of the price. It was the cheapest they could get. But they can rotate suppliers behind the same contract, and the user never sees the same. So Apple needs a clear internal story. We list the heavy planning until reliability meets our bar. But here's what nobody is talking about. If Apple controls the equestration, then the model is just a plugin. And when the model is a plugin, suppliers fight for Apple's business, not the other way around. That's smart. So, so did Apple give up on EA? Look at her, she tried. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments. But they outsourced the unpredictable parts to protect reliability profits and the ability to swap suppliers while it strengthens the layer that actually locks you in. Yo, by the way, some of you guys don't realize you haven't subscribed. So I will check that before going to the next video. And while you're down there, why not leave a thumbs up? Anyway, I'll catch you guys soon.